Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you are just stopping by, welcome. I am going to share with you today our beautiful little boy, Mr. Emmett. <laughs> two weeks old and a couple of days um, he was born on March 15th at 8 30 in the morning and it was a scheduled c-section just like we talked about previously I had a c-section with my son Micah after five hours of pushing and no progress so this time we decided to opt for a scheduled c-section and just go with a plan rather than try a v-back um, which was an awesome decision for our family and worked out really well i'm going to share with you all about how that experience went his birth story and talk to you a little bit about emmett his name does not come from a family member or anybody else like that we um liked it that's basically it i brought up the name emmett uh before i was even pregnant um brought it up to eric and he was like oh no don't like it at all and the names that we were bouncing around um girl and boy we already know what our little girl would be named um but i was in love with the name gideon for a boy and eric was not on board and so randomly I just threw out Emmett in a car ride um, on a date night and he was like, oh my gosh, I love it. And I'm like, well yeah, I didn't like it like nine months ago. His middle name is Roman and the reason we chose Roman is I have a middle name that starts with an R. Eric has a middle name that starts with an R. And Micah's name, um, his middle name starts with an R. And we knew we liked that ahead of time before even noticing that we had an R theme going on. So with an R theme, obviously Emmett needed a middle name that started with an R. And um, we chose Roman because one of Eric's uh, favorite Bible verses is from the book of Roman in the Bible. And um, so it just really worked out well and sounded very good with Emmett. So Emmett Roman is his name. We had the c-section planned for the 16th of march um from the get-go however when i got there um and met with my doctor at 37 weeks i met with the ob who was going to be doing the surgery and he is the one who did mica surgery he knew everything about my previous history and he asked is there anybody born next week that you don't want him to share a birthday with <laughs> um which was a wonderful question thank you so much for asking that um and i said of course not um so the 16th was actually booked the or was completely full so they um told me we were gonna move it up one day to the 15th and we were going to do it first thing in the morning and that we needed to be there at 6 a.m so we had a good night's rest well everyone did but me because i could not sleep i was too excited um and of course very uncomfortable and um we slept great as a little family of three is our last night and then the morning of the 15th my dad came and knocked on the door and we grabbed our bags and skedaddled and he snuck in the room so that micah could keep sleeping and we headed across the street to the hospital we were staying on campus um at patient housing which is just right across the street from the main hospital and that was perfect good morning guys today is the day baby boy number two is arriving Yay. we are staying right there and across the parking lot is the hospital so we are headed across today is monday march 15th and it is 5 50 a.m um we are headed over for a 6 a.m check-in get everything situated and then hopefully a baby around eight o'clock how are you feeling dad pretty nervous 
Nervous. <laughs> yes, we're very nervous about this whole two boys situation. But if you're surviving two boys, let me know down in the comments any tips and tricks. <laughs> we could use them. But we'll show you more when we get inside. So we uh, hightailed across the street and showed up. They were ready for us. They got us into basically the triage room. Since we obviously knew I was going to be staying, I was not gonna be sent home. Um, you're in there until your COVID test comes back. So Eric and I got our COVID test and we had to wear a mask while we were waiting. They were checking baby, um, put the monitor on, and we were just in the process of getting ready for the surgery. Of course, our COVID test came back negative in which we were then able to remove our masks. The nurses and doctors kept theirs on at all times, but since we were, COVID free, they um, allowed us to remove our masks. So that was very nice and a bit more comfortable. And um, when they hooked up the monitor to monitor baby, he was doing wonderful. His heart rate was around the 135, I think it was. And they looked at me funny and said, are you feeling your contractions? And I, of course, was not. And I said, nope, I don't feel anything. And they're like, you are having consistent contractions um, and you're not feeling anything. I said, no, I just feel a little bit of, you know, like tightness, but that's pretty normal at that point of pregnancy. And so I apparently was having consistent contractions and if we did not do the surgery, he probably would have arrived uh, by himself in the next couple of days anyways. Um, but I'm glad I did not feel the contractions because I was not prepared to go through labor again. Um, my doctor came in and said, I'll see you in the OR here shortly. And I got permission to take my camera in. I did not get any footage of the actual surgery because nobody wants to see that. We're all ready. You're looking like a nurse. Yep. Baby's doing good. I'm all hooked up over here. Got the beautiful gown on and the giant bump no pants best thing ever and there's daddy <laughs> and it is almost seven o'clock and i think the section is scheduled for eight this experience was very different than the last one um, the last one was an unplanned C-section. Everything was crazy. I was, of course, in active labor. I just got done pushing for five hours, so I was in pain. And I'll leave that whole story linked up in the cards if you guys want to go hear about how Mr. Micah joined the world. This time was so much calmer, and I just went in, and we um, did the spinal block, and got to just lay on the table while they had everything figured out. They were getting me all situated while Eric waited in the hallway. They got me all hooked up and uh, put the screen up and then Eric was able to come in. And Jen, it's completely normal. You're sharp. Oh, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I will let you know. Awesome. How are you feeling, Mom? Good. I'm scared too. I don't want to feel anything. <laughs> so I'm scared that I will, you know? Lots of hair! Oh gosh. Lots of hair. Lots of pressure. Whoa! Hey, Dan. Yeah? You can stand up. If you want to. I was like, okay. <laughs> right when he came out, uh, my doctor held him up over, like to peek out over the screen. And Eric, he told Eric to stand up. 
so Eric got to stand up and see that. And um, he, the way he handed, he looked like he was handing Emmett to Eric. He like held him up in a way that like looked like he was gonna hand him to Eric. So Eric immediately was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and reached out for him and the doctor was like, no, 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 don't take him. And Eric's like, you, you just handed me the slimy, bloody baby. I'm not gonna not try to catch him. <laughs> And so Eric had to get all cleaned up after that. It was just hilarious. Everybody in the room started laughing. My anesthesiologist was amazing. And um, right when they put the spinal block in, my, my blood pressure dropped, which is a common thing. And I was just like, oh, I don't feel good. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. And he was like, okay, just give me about 30 seconds. And he was standing at my head and he literally reminded me of like the Wizard of Oz, um, the wizard like behind the curtain with like all of his, gadgets and stuff that's like what it reminded me of with the anesthesiologist he's like give me 30 seconds touch a couple buttons and then hey i have medication that is making me feel better so it was awesome so once mr emmett was born we heard him scream and cry which is always a wonderful sound that you want to hear right off the get-go and um the doctors just continued to work on me and i got to see and then over in the corner getting all cleaned up. Boy. He's a big boy. I can't wait to hear his weight. <laughs> we'll probably weigh him over and pack you. Yeah. He what? That's a lot. I'll weigh him over there. Yeah, yeah. Just follow, follow him. Yep, and it is going. Yep. And it's a little bit um, not sharp, but like. 10 fingers, 10 toes. Yeah. And I was not feeling too great at that moment. Um, I was very, very anxious and obviously could feel some like tugging and pulling and um, I could feel they had something in like holding my bladder back um, while they were working and I could feel like some pain in that area and so um, I was not in a good spot. I felt like I was gonna pass out to have him go immediately to my chest um, So he got cleaned up and everything there until I was feeling a bit better They were very good at keeping me informed and um, Helped me calm down a lot and of course Eric was amazing and it was great to actually have him in the room with me um, after Emmett was born and I was all <clears throat> cleaned up and uh, closed up they moved me down to the like recovery room um, where I was monitored very closely for the next hour I had Emmett with me and we just did skin to skin cuddling and had a lot of time just the three of us um, to just relax a little bit after the surgery and calm down and then once all the close monitoring was done uh, we were moved down to our room that we were going to stay in for the next couple of days and once we were settled the nurses of course come in and need you like a loaf of bread which is one of the worst parts of the entire journey um but i dealt with that well and started um of course on pain meds and all of that um and we were able just to get some rest as a family i was pretty much on a high the entire time eric passed out because he was exhausted so we are in the room now at this point and of course just facetiming our families and letting everybody know taking photos and videos and um he starts cooing and making these really adorable noises or so we thought they were really adorable noises um it was more of like a grunting and at the end of the grunt he was putting effort into breathing is what it was seeming like so we thought it was cute you can't really tell until you like really focus and the nurses got concerned they brought in doctors and the doctors were concerned and um they started doing more tests on him and one of them is like a cardiac test of having they do like i think it's blood it's either your o2 sat or your blood pressure on like your wrist and then foot um, on opposite sides and you have three um, tries to pass 
that test. And to pass, basically, the numbers need to be very close together and um, within a certain range. So Emmett failed, and he actually only passed on the fourth try. So technically, he passed, but he failed because it was outside of the three like strike rule, basically. And so that led to a lot of monitoring, and um, they wanted to get an x-ray um, of his chest, basically. They want to see if it's cardiac or if it is respiratory. And the doctor that we had at that time, because, you know, obviously shift changes and everything, you don't always have the same person. So when all the testing was happening, we had this one lady doctor and she was wonderful in the way that she's very factual and I like factual doctors tell me what's going on tell me like honestly what's happening and I have enough knowledge um, in like medical terminology and everything to get the gist of what you're talking about without being scared but it makes her bedside manner a little different so she goes it could either be respiratory um, or it could be a hole in his heart. And it just blew us away for a second where we were like, how did you go from respiratory to a hole in his heart? And after being explained to in much better detail, way after the fact, I understand what she was getting at, but it was a terrible way to come across. And instead of saying like, it could be respiratory or cardiac, we need to do more tests to see which, and we'll move on from there. That would have been appropriate. But to say it could possibly be in a hole in his heart, obviously terrified us. So we do get permission for an x-ray on his chest to see lungs are all good, everything's good there. And then he of course is being monitored very closely and he has now pa or failed that test I was talking about and so next it's okay maybe it's a heart issue and so they want to keep us from monitoring and all they're doing is checking his O2 sats um, and his blood pressures and making sure they are staying where they need to be and they would drop um, lower and into a little bit of a scary zone um, right off the get-go but over the next couple of days it got better and his grunting got better and it turned into cooing and now he doesn't do the scary grunting anymore so after all of the monitoring and all of that crazy and scariness I did not pick up the camera at all during the time in the hospital after the fact and that is why um, I was planning on it but we were not in a place to do so and my doctor was discussing all of the test results and everything with the Anchorage Pediatrics um, cardiologist and that is like a bigger hospital here in Alaska and then also down in Seattle Children's um, was speaking with the cardiologist down there and it was determined that Emmett did not have a heart issue Thank you, Jesus. It was just ended up being respiratory because he went from sea to land very quickly um, without getting anything squeezed out, obviously. He was not put out a, a birth canal. Um, and it just took him longer to adjust to life here on land. We are very thankful that Mr. Emmett is healthy as can be and that everything turned out to be fine. It was a very scary couple of days. Um, I did purchase the outlet monitor, of course, to monitor his oxygen, um, his O2 sat, as well as his heart rate um, throughout the night just to give me peace of mind. Everything worked out well on Thursday. We got discharged and we went across the street and got to um, hang out and have family time, but um, Mr. Micah and his daddy came and um, picked us up at the hospital. She wants him to see. What's this? Baby. 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 Isn't he cute? Hi, honey. That's your brother. Is that baby brother? Baby. Yeah. Baby. That's Bubba. Bubba. Yeah. Hi. Hi. You're so 
a nose. He has a nose. Hi, honey. There you go. Hey. Oh, it's so much lighter than mine. <laughs> thank you guys so much You're for welcome. everything. Safe travels. Will do. Thank, thank you. Because of COVID restrictions and everything like that, Micah was not allowed to actually come back into the um, room and meet Emma at the hospital. We got to meet in the hallway and then went across the street and had a bit more family time. And it was amazing. We just kept with Micah's lead and um, Emmett brought Micah a gift and he was very excited it was a truck. He wanted to see the baby, he knew of the baby, he knew that mommy was picking baby up at the hospital, um, but he was not interested in holding him and that was totally fine, we asked. Micah, do you wanna hold Emmett? And he goes, no, and no, okay, that's totally fine. Um, but anytime he wanted to see the baby or touch the baby, we of course let him. Um, he gave lots of kisses and then it wasn't until we came home on Friday, we flew home and um, have just been settling in over the past two weeks and um, it wasn't until day probably three of being home that Micah decided he wanted to hold Emmett and um, he's very sweet. He goes over, um, I have like a little rocker, you can't see it, a little rocker that Emmett hangs out in and Micah will go over randomly and like cradle his feet or cradle his head and go help, help me. Help me, because he wants to hold him. But we are home and adjusting very well to a life as a family of four. I am recovering well from my C-section, and um, I will be doing some postpartum videos on the C-section and kind of healing and recovery from all of that because I have been a two-time C-section mama. The first time obviously was unplanned, unexpected, and um, a rougher recovery than the second time which is planned and um, worked out really well and went smooth. So I'm going to be sharing all about that in some upcoming postpartum videos as well as baby updates. We'll keep you updated on Emmett as he grows and gets bigger. He was born at 8 pounds and 14 ounces. So he's a big baby, but he is lighter than Micah. Micah was 10'3 when he was born. Oh, that was a big burp. <laughs> and now that we've been home, um, we have had the seal of approval that breastfeeding is going well. Emmett dropped birth weight, obviously, dropped down to 8'3 and um, bounced back up before we left Sitka and then um, since we've been home, we just got him weighed and he is now nine pounds and two ounces. He's the sweetest, calmest little boy. We were definitely not expecting that because Micah was a very good baby, very good. Super calm, he was pretty cuddly um, and just was so interested in the world around him, looked around all the time, was very alert, but a very good baby. And so we were like, oh man, the second one's gonna be, you know, crazy. He's even more calm and he just wants to be held all the time. It's his favorite thing in the entire world. If I was to move right now, he'd open one eye and look at me like, you're not planning on putting me down, are you? He is furry. He was born with a whole head of hair and like full eyebrows. <laughs> and um, you can't really see in this light but if you hold it correctly, there's no break of hair between his head and his eyebrows. <laughs> Unfortunately, that came from my side of the family because my husband has like three chest hairs. Our hearts are full and we are just settling into a life as a family of four. And I cannot wait to share more upcoming videos of our life and Mr. Emmett growing. Um, so if you are interested in any of that motherhood content, then please consider subscribing. It's absolutely free. Hit that bell notification button so you know when I post a video. I do post every single Wednesday. However, you know, life <laughs> happens. I am a mama. So if anything is to change, um, that bell notification will let you know when the video actually goes up. And also follow me over on Instagram. I am grounded underscore mama. And that's where I'll give you like up to date um, daily updates 
on anything that is going on, share cute photos, or if a video isn't gonna make it out, or if we have bonus videos, which we do have a bonus video coming out this week, so stay tuned for that. Outside of motherhood videos, I also do lifestyle videos, cooking, cleaning, decorating. Um, we've recently moved into a new house. We're in the process of getting new furniture and um, kind of upgrading each room in our home as we move forward and have lots of crazy plans for this summer in regards to all of that and life in Alaska. So please stay tuned for all of those. I would love to have you over here on this channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll catch you later. Bye.